Welcome back to The Lemon Factor. I'm Chad, and today we're going back to the dyno with one of our project cars, the 2019 Mazda MX-5 Miata RF. And when I first moved to beautiful Colorado, I still had 93 octane in the tank. The car was transported across the country, and I quickly put it on the dyno to see how much horsepower the car made with 93 octane. And that was important to me because here in Colorado, like maybe about a third of the United States, I only have access to 91 octane um, at most. So that's the highest octane we get here in Colorado. And I wanted to see, like some of you may wanna know, what if any amount of horsepower and torque you lose or gain, depending on how you look at it, the difference anyway in horsepower output between 93 octane and 91 octane. So I've used up all the 93 octane on the car. I've filled it up with 91 a couple times, actually twice. Uh, I've been driving it for a while, so if there's any relearning of the ECU, it's already happened. So it has 91 octane in the car. Let's head to the dyno. Let's see how much horsepower the car loses I'm hoping that it doesn't lose too much. Quite frankly, I haven't really noticed a difference in driving, but you know, maybe my butt dyno is not as calibrated as some of yours. Also, just in general, so whether it's the Miata or the other project car, the Honda Accord, I'm gonna make this statement that if the car is tuned on its edge, meaning that it's trying to get every ounce of horsepower, every ounce of performance out of it, and it's high compression or maybe the turbocharge, I do think you'll see a little bit of a difference. Meaning, with this car, I'm gonna guess that we don't have a huge difference in horsepower and torque output. But with the Honda Accord, which I'll do something similar, I'm going to compare different octane levels, I wouldn't be surprised if we notice a little bit more of a difference with the turbocharged car. But that's enough talk. If you're interested in finding out the difference in horsepower between 93 octane and 91 octane, if you live in a location where you can only get 91 octane and you've always wondered, hey, how much am I losing to those people who can access 93? Then stay tuned. Before we continue, please don't forget to subscribe, turn on notifications. That way you're made aware of future videos. If you like this video, I would love it if you could give it a thumbs up and let me know what you think. Leave your comment below. I have recently offered to pay to have some baseline dyno runs done for subscribers. If you are interested, please reach out to me, send me an email, let me know what kind of car you have. Does not have to be a Mazda Miata, does not even have to be a Honda Accord. If you have a car that you'd like to have dynoed and you're here in the greater Denver metro area, then reach out, let's talk, and let's see if we can get you in a future video.
So we dyno the car, what, three or four times. Surprisingly, no difference. If anything, we are producing a little bit higher wheel horsepower numbers than we had originally produced when we brought the car to the dyno with 93 octane. So at least with this 2019, so the ND2, Mazda MX-5 Miata RF, our project car, we have not noticed any difference in horsepower output between 93 octane and 91 octane. Which is great because I really was super excited about moving to Colorado, but very concerned about the loss of performance and having to then drop down to using 91 octane. And at least with the Mazda Miata, shouldn't be a concern so hope you like this video if you did please please as always please give it a thumbs up and that's it for today thank you for joining and until next time